Today I'm going to continue in the series, Do Women Even Love Men? Better said, Does Anybody Love Anybody? And I'm going to address two comments that I got under the previous video. One was about the wall and the other one was about Brifault's Law. There were more comments that I received, but I'm just going to take these two because I think they're more relevant for this stage. As for the rest, I will answer them in the subsequent videos. I really hope that this one will help people open up a bit their perspectives. All right, that's the only stake that I have here. So bear with me. I'm going to put timestamps for each question or each comment. Bear with me at least for the duration of that answer. All right, here we go. Just to clarify, the wall is less about fertility than sexual market value. The idea being that primary female agency is sexual and the period when this wanes, typically over 30, is what is described as the wall. As this channel is about sexual matters, then this is probably more relevant than the channel acknowledges. The fact that Keanu Reeves' examples are so rare appears to validate this wall, admittedly blunt observation. So, first of all, in case you don't know about the wall, which was my case also, I had never heard of it um, until just with a few comments here, then here's the most objective explanation that I could possibly think of, which comes from ChatGPT. I asked the fellow, could you give me like a brief sum up of all the stuff that is shared online about the wall? It doesn't have any stakes, okay? It's not getting married. It's not worried about reaching a certain age or stuff like that. So really, it's objective. The wall is a concept that originated within the manosphere. A loosely connected online community primarily focused on issues related to masculinity, relationships, and gender dynamics. The concept of the wall is often associated with the idea that women experience a decline in their attractiveness and dating market value as they age, particularly as they approach or surpass a certain age threshold. The origin of the wall can be tracked back to discussions within online forums and communities where individuals, especially men, would share and discuss their perspectives on dating, relationships, and societal expectations. The concept suggests that women hit a metaphorical wall at a certain age, after which their desirability in the dating market is presumed to decline. Initially, the term might have been used to express concerns or observations about societal expectations, age-related beauty standards, and the perceived challenges women face in the dating world. However, it's crucial to note that the concept has been widely criticized for promoting ageism, stereotyping, and reinforcing harmful gender norms. Over time, the concept has evolved and taken on different meanings in various online communities. Some individuals continue to use it to discuss age-related dynamics in relationships, while others reject or criticize the concept as outdated or harmful. As with many concepts within the manosphere, opinions on the wall can vary widely, and it's essential to approach such discussions with a critical perspective considering the diverse experiences and perspectives of individuals in real-world dating and relationships. Right. So, first and foremost, what I want to say here is that as a person, as an individual, I wasn't exposed to it, really. In where I live on this planet, this concept is not a problem. The culture that I live in, it's not the most fortunate one, I'll be honest, but at least doesn't have this problem. Oh, you've hit the wall. We really don't talk about this. This is an Anglo-Saxon world problem, honestly. I'll give you that one. Most of the planet doesn't really care about this. They're too busy surviving the current, all the stuff that is going on. Some people are fighting for their lives, by the way. Some people are struggling to make ends meet, like they don't care about fucking walls. Bluntly put. <laughs> Secondly, this channel is first and foremost about personal growth and personal evolution. So this channel 
which is essentially sharing my understanding of things, is about integrating your intimate life on your personal growth, personal evolutionary journey. That's what the channel's about. It's not about all sexual things, all our sexual matters. It's about integrating your intimacy on your personal growth journey. If you want to hold this channel accountable for something, then hold it accountable for this. All right? From a personal growth perspective, I'm going to answer both of these questions, okay? The first of all was, or the comment, the one on the wall, and then the next one. From a personal growth perspective, the wall doesn't make sense. From a personal growth perspective, we understand that everybody embodies into this life to grow, to expand more than they were in the moment they became aware of the fact that they have a soul or not just the flesh and that's it. And that they actually came here to learn, to grow, to understand, to expand. Okay, so whatever level of consciousness and understanding and capacities you had at that time, when you engage on the personal growth journey, your purpose is to become bigger, richer, more rounded being. So walls are only there to be overcome, broken, taken down, annihilated, completely just grow out of that whole mentality. And that's it, honestly. So from where I stand, there's really no need for walls. That's one. The other one is the, what the comments said uh, with the sexual market and the primary agency of women being sexual. Here, again, from a personal growth perspective, everybody's primary agency is that of a human being that has a soul and is embodied here to grow to learn that's what this channel is about this channel is not mainstream so if anybody comes here expecting me to take the mainstream approach they got the wrong channel coming back to the idea of sexual market and dating market and value and everything the value of people on a personal growth journey is in the experience that they've accumulated in life and the wisdom that they've extracted from that experience. I'm talking life, not just intimacy. Okay? Intimacy. That's why there's a holistic intimacy there in the title. I'm talking about integrating intimacy, which is more than just sexual things, into your personal growth journey. And your life has an impact on what kind of partners you choose, the moments where you choose to not have partners and focus on something else and acknowledge that you have a sexual impulse, but really work with it in a more holistic way. And there are a lot of practices for that. Spiritual practices, somatic practices that work your sexual impulse. They don't let it control you or eat you from inside if you don't express it because it, it's there. It needs to be expressed, but you can do it in a very wholesome way for you especially when whatever challenges you have in your life you don't have the energy the time the availability for relationships those are part of one's evolutionary path also struggle and the choice not to be in a relationship because you have more important things to do than be in a relationship at a given time in your life so the primary agency of anybody is the wisdom that they extract from their path Secondly, there are no markets. Why? Whenever you're talking, you're talking about market, you're talking about market in the context of goods. Because I sure don't want to imagine that you're talking about market with people because the only market that we know of when it comes to people, <laughs> it was either the slave market or the human trafficking market. You're not talking about that, are you? People, when they're on the growth path, they don't buy others with a given deadline. They share their life with the people that touch their hearts, their souls, with the people that enrich their existence. And they can share their lives in many ways. It doesn't have to be just intimacy. It can be friendships. 
it can be building uh teaching a, a place of sharing knowledge that would be a professional path there are more ways in which you can enrich your life than just marry somebody by the time they reach a certain age and have kids and especially if you haven't done any work on yourself and you imagine that there is a sexual market value of people and that there's a dating market and uh, you want to reduce your life to just that honestly so my invitation here for anybody that wants to keep moving around in circles where they talk about walls and sexual market and agency which is primarily sexual and not primarily in terms of the spirit the essence of a human being that is here to grow and share their gifts my invitation for them is to engage on a personal growth journey really open up your perspectives gentlemen especially you because the manosphere shares these concepts also in the manosphere the emotion that is shared in those videos is what bitterness rejoicing in other people's suffering rejoicing in the fact that certain women have reached a specific threshold age threshold and they haven't done god knows whatever somebody else says they should have done rejoicing in in those kinds of things is a sign of a low level of consciousness and of a being that is so poor in soul that's from romanian okay sarak duhul poor in the soul that they have nothing better to rejoice in their lives than seeing others hitting imaginary walls that maybe they don't care about those walls it's also dehumanizing and it's not only dehumanizing the people that the women in this case that are judged for reaching a certain age threshold but it's also dehumanizing to the people that withhold such beliefs and there's also another risk that the manosphere doesn't really share here in the anglo-saxon worlds there are studies from the united kingdom and also from the united states that men by the time they reach their middle ages are three times more likely than women to commit suicide that percentage is linked to depression is linked to substance abuse which substance abuse with people that don't necessarily work on their emotions those two are highly linked substance abuse alcohol other kinds of substances they don't take you up on a they, they don't take you out of the low emotional state that you're in mental health isn't addressed in the manosphere and a lot of the guys that are there are not there because they are thriving in their lives they're not there because they're happy in their lives they're not there because they have gifts to share they're there because they're bitter frustrated angry upset rejected all cocktail mixes of going down a path of depression and, and, and substance abuse and really not living a healthy happy life gentlemen you're not going down a really happy path honestly you're not going down a healthy one at least a peaceful path that's not where you're headed with the messages that are shared there rejoicing in somebody else's supposed or proved uh sorrow disappointment suffering doesn't make you any better honestly it a happy a genuinely happy person doesn't rejoice in somebody else's suffering or pain or trouble no so if you want to take my word for it i think a personal growth journey would definitely benefit you taking care of your physical health what you eat what kind of substances you don't use uh, and what kind of thoughts and emotions you have because those two come hand in hand mental health mental hygiene those are really important manosphere doesn't talk about those things if you don't like me or the way i share this message there is at least one man that i can recommend here shohang yi this is a shaolin master he's my age he's of a vietnamese descent established in germany europe he has the shaolin the european shaolin temple he's got a lot of interviews online ted talks 
really this guy even if you don't follow his programs even if you cannot go to his monastery and, and live the Shaolin monk life at least for a month and really have a growth in your life that way like physical emotional all of it there i think the most powerful way to transfer knowledge is in the embodied presence but if you can't go there at least listen to this guy's interviews online there are a lot of them i like them even i like them and he's talking about shaolin and the warrior mentality you're gonna love this really and i think you're gonna gain so much more from this guy than listening to manosphere videos and putting down other women and all that really you're not getting wholesome education growth learning there you're just perpetuating your bitterness your rejection your whatever other low emotions that you're carrying so shohangi okay now let's go to the second comment Default's law maintains that the female not the male determines all the conditions of the animal family where the female can derive no benefit from association with the male no such association takes place today we would say relationship rather than association exceptions don't make the rules and if you're like me i've never heard of robert griffol before seeing this comment i'm going to read to you again an explanation that i asked chat gpt to give me really i wanted a sum up of who this guy was because some of these concepts i just don't bother reading i'm going to explain to you why but first of all here's who robert Brifol was robert Brifol was a british social anthropologist and surgeon he had a diverse academic background having studied medicine and anthropology Brifol conducted research on various topics including marriage family structures and the role of women in societies he is perhaps best known for his work the mothers a study of the origins of sentiments and institutions published in three volumes between 1927 and 1931 in this work Brifol explored the mater the maternal influence on social and cultural development the concept now known as Brifol's law is often attributed to his observations on the role of women in shaping so social structures and relationships Brifol's law is a socio-biological principle uh, principle that is often stated as the female not the male determines all the conditions of the animal family where the female can derive no benefit from association with the male no such association takes place in simpler terms Brifol's law suggests that in the context of human and animal relationships the female plays a crucial role in determining the nature and continuation of the relationship it implies that if a female perceives no benefits or gains from associating with a male, the relationship is unlikely to persist. It's important to note that Brifol's law is a concept that has been discussed within certain circles, particularly in discussions related to evolutionary psychology and relationships. However, it has also been criticized for oversimplifying complex social dynamics and not fully accounting for the multifaceted nature of human relationships. As with many theories in his realm, perspectives on Brifol's law can vary widely, and it's not universally accepted within the scientific community. So, um, from a personal growth perspective, because this is what the channel's about, I'm gonna say it pretty simply. This kind of mindset, if I get something, I'll be in a relationship. If I don't get something, I'm not in a relationship. Doesn't make sense. Again, first of all, all human nature inherently is about giving and receiving. Nobody can exist on their own. So all human relationships, whether friendships, family, work, social connections, intimate, all have an inherent exchange in them. And up to a point, that is healthy and that is to be expected everybody gives and everybody receives when you exacerbate just one aspect of it like robert Brifol did you're missing out just like chat gpt said on the whole complexity of social dynamics and relationships between people if you don't ever want to grow and expand your consciousness then probably you're gonna get stuck to that level 
women just want to use us and that's the way it is and that's it. Gentlemen, if you want to follow that path, up to you. From a personal growth journey, it doesn't make sense. And really, from a personal growth journey, those kinds of dynamics are to be avoided and grown out of. If you don't want to grow, you're probably going to stick to just that mindset and you're probably going to see people and keep seeing people that confirm your perspective on life. If you want to grow out of it, and if you want to acknowledge that there are people on this planet who are making efforts to improve themselves, to grow bigger, richer inside as human beings, and they treat others as rich, big, expanded human beings, and they relate to them from a level of compassion, of love, of gratitude, sure, you're going to see people like that. Even if those people are not your intimate partners, because nobody is obligated to be in a relationship with anybody else. Please hear me out. Nobody owes anybody an intimate relationship. Nobody, neither man or woman. So when you're on a growth path, you understand some people might be there for you to be intimate with. Others might not. They might be great friends, great, I don't know, social connections. Uh, great business partners or, or just learning journey partners. Some might be your teachers. Some might be your apprentices. So really, you're not going to limit your understanding just to that, even when it comes to relationships between men and women. Okay? This complexity can be applied in those relationships as well when you're on a personal growth journey. When you're not Okay, you're not, and I'm, I could speak here for an entire century, and you wouldn't get it. So that's my take on it, honestly. I only have one last thing that I want to encourage everybody here. Take care of your health. What I said in the first explanation, in the first comment, men are more likely to commit suicide when they reach their middle ages than women. And that more likely is associated with depression substance abuse, quality of relationships, all kinds of relationships, or lack of quality of relationships, and just a really poor mental health. Those are important. Manosphere doesn't address them at all. Those are important to be addressed. And in order for you to be a better human being, first of all, for yourself, and there may be for your family. Maybe your family doesn't want you to take your life or be depressed or be bitter and just rejoice in other people's suffering. Have you ever thought about that? So if you want to be better at this life, really take on a personal growth journey. If you don't like Shohangi, maybe there are other Shaolin masters, sportsmen, um, wrestlers, anybody else that really takes you out of that negative mindset. Another man that I really appreciate is Andrew Huberman. Really, that guy shares a lot of healthy stuff out there. Keanu Reeves, I'm not going to say this over and over. I really appreciate that soul and the stuff that he shares. I think there are more people that can share really great things with us. And why not find another human being of the opposite sex and be in a really beautiful, peaceful relationship with that person? But unless you work out your shit in, in this kind of mindset, chances are not so high that you meet that person and be in a thriving relationship with her. That's it. I'll leave you with this, and I'll come back in the next videos with other comments and more explanations. Bye.